So welcome to part 2 of this video series. In the previous part I started putting together this mech which I was making out of some clear plastic baubles that I got from eBay. You can get these things in various sizes so I thought they'd be quite useful in putting together a sort of a robot with some nice organic shapes to it. But in the previous video I'd got as far as priming up the model. So in this video I'm going to look at painting the model, putting it all together and adding a few final details. And one thing I did want to do is to add some details on the inside of the mech. Now obviously most of these aren't going to be easily seen, but I did like the idea that if you were to look at the model from a particular angle you might catch a glimpse of the internal mechanisms. And I thought that would be cool just to add a further degree of realism. I always find it quite satisfying if someone's actually made the effort to go and detail every single aspect of the model. So I'm using Tamiya spray paints for the main body of this and the colour I'm using is this sort of teal blue which I'd used on a previous robot. The colour just reminds me of the 1950s somehow, you can imagine it being on those sort of American cars from the period and I really like the colour so I thought I'd go with that um, with the mind that this would sort of hopefully give the mech a sort of a 1950s look. So I guess we're going maybe for a, I don't know, maybe a slightly diesel punk sort of look to this or maybe something that came from the Fallout games, something like that. I bought a book by Simon Stalenhag a while back, who's an artist who does a lot of mech uh, paintings, and I can sort of imagine this model maybe stomping about in the deserts in one of his paintings, so that's the sort of vibe I'm going for with this. In order to break up the colour scheme a bit, I'm also going to use some oranges as well. So I mentioned that I'd collected together a bunch of images in a Google Keep, and this is the gallery I've come up with. Um, I found these useful for ideas for the mech itself, but also useful for colour schemes. And looking through these photos you can see that people have generally used um, the blue as the main body but also oranges in there as well, even some rust colours as well which seem to go quite well with it. So I think blue and orange is quite a nice combination so I want to try and do something similar here. Now of course I've got all of these panels which cover the limbs and I don't know if you can see here I've actually drawn in in pencil some panel detailing and then I've scratched in the detail using a similar method that I used for the main body in the previous video. So I'm not quite sure how easy you can see here but I've gone and scratched in some panel detail on these parts too. So there's all my parts with their base colours and now it's time to start actually adding some detail. Now the hands are obviously uh, much more complicated than most of the rest of the body so I'm paying particular attention to these. I'm giving the detail on the inside of the hand a black base coat initially then I'm going to go over it with some metallic colours and finally a thin wash of oranges to sort of give it a slightly rusted look. I don't want to go too weathered with this thing, I want it to have a few knocks and uh, dings here and there as though it's been used but I don't want it to be rusting and beaten up so I'm not going quite as far with this as I might have gone with some other models. So in order to accentuate the panel detailing on these models, what I'm doing is actually putting some black uh, pigments into the gaps between the panels. And what I'm doing is putting a little bit of paint there, then I'm adding some isopropyl alcohol, and that's allowing the paint to flow down the channel that I've created. Now in order to accentuate those panels even further, what I'm doing here is masking off one side of the panel and then I'm airbrushing some black onto the panel that's exposed. So doing that just adds some differentiation between the panels, uh, maybe to suggest that one panel has been replaced at some point in the robot's life and that way that the weathering on the panels isn't uniform across them. And I found that quite an effective way of just adding some differentiation to the model. It looks a bit plain if you just literally leave it one colour, so you do need to add some shading and a bit more weathering here and there just to break up that detail and add a degree of realism to it. Now 
Now for this gun turret thing, I'm actually using an hourclad, which um, do a really good range of metallic um, paints. They're all applied by airbrush, and what you do is you add a gloss coat black as a base layer, and then you can airbrush over the metallic colors on top. And as you can see here, it really does give quite a nice metallic finish. Now, this does look good on camera, but it also looks really good to the eye, and I think it probably is the best metallic color that I've ever found anyway. They're not too hard wearing, so I have found that they rub off quite easily. Um, and I've got a gloss varnish which I use on this as well, which is also made by Alclad, and that works really well. But even with the varnish, they're still a little bit delicate, so they're fine for models, but I did want to use them on a prop, and I found that they came off quite easily. So that's something to bear in mind if you ever do use these. So I'm also applying some metallic colours to this arm. Um, as you can see, it's got a black gloss finish, so that's allowing me to now put some metallic alcohol over the top of that. And that's giving it quite a nice shiny finish. I'm also using the gloss black base coat that's intended for metallic colours and to add some more shading to the blue areas of the arm as well. So to add a bit more variation, I've also decided to do one of the shoulders in orange. So what I'm doing is painting in some black between the panel lines, also adding a bit of metallic colours here and there just to um, simulate a little bit of chipping to the paint. So here are the two shoulder pads with a bit of weathering added. Now that that's all dried, I can now come in with the airbrush again and just give it a little bit of shading to this by masking off some areas again. Now for the main body, I wanted some sort of um, cartoon face on it. Now this is a little bit inspired by um, the mech scene in Sucker Punch. Um, awful movie, but it's got some cool scenes in it. And I wanted to have something on this which would be a little bit sort of um, cartoony. I think that kind of goes with the period that I'm going for. Now I'm not too good at sort of doing um, illustrations as it were, so I'm having to keep this fairly simple. But I thought uh, simply a um, sort of a mouth section where the gun could come out of and a pair of eyes would work uh, well enough. Now painting the pupils um, would have been a bit of a nightmare to get them uh, perfectly symmetrical. So what I'm doing here is just using some decals which I've um, printed out uh, a while back actually. And I'm just using some zeros here for the pupils and I can paint in the interior to make that a solid black. I also wanted a little bit more variation as well so I've added some orange stripes to the main sort of turret section at the top here. So as with the other panels on the body, I'm now adding some additional shading to the main body here as well. Um, it's at this stage that my airbrush started playing up, so um, unfortunately some of the shading on the main body didn't come out quite as well as I'd hoped. The airbrush I'm using is a cheap one from eBay, so I should probably invest in a decent one. So for the legs, I've got this sort of a piston set up here, and this fits inside this uh, bauble thing that I've made with a few more plastic baubles. So I'm more or less there, so here's everything uh, coming together. just adding a little bit more weathering now. I found that with the Alclad shading that I've used, using white spirits and oil paints actually interacts with the Alclad. So what I've actually started using is some watercolors to add some uh, rust pigments here. The water won't interact with the paint, so that's a good way of getting around that. Now for these two turrets that I've got embedded in the robot's chest, these are just more baubles, but what I've done is to put some neodymium magnets on the inside. So that means that they're held in place by the magnets, but they can also move freely around, so you can sort of pose it to some degree. Also got some poseable gun turret things there as well.
As with my previous mix, I also want to add some electronics to this. I'm not going to go too overboard, but I do like the look of having some lights coming from the inside of the robot. Just helps sort of um, give it a bit more life, uh, makes it look like there's something going on inside it. And it also adds some interesting shadows and lighting patterns to it. So what I'm doing is using these um, LED strips, um, as I have on previous models. And I'm just going to place these on the interior of the robot so the light sort of shines out from beneath the panels. So the final stage of this is to just uh, put some details on the base. And the previous mech that I made, um, I actually put quite a lot of effort into the base, did a bit of a diorama, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I don't really feel the need to do anything too extravagant with the base here. So what I'm doing is just uh, masking off the feet and I'm using some aluminium tape to do that. That's just because that's uh, waterproof, whereas the masking tape isn't. This is going to be covered in um, some wet glue and um, grout and sand. So I think this stuff's going to work a little bit better than masking tape. So for this, I'm just going to add a layer of plaster to um, give it a nice sort of gradient and a bit of an irregular surface. I'm then going to cover all that with some sand and grout. And the way to stick this down is to spray the whole thing with isopropyl alcohol. And then once that's all wet, you can then drop some um, thin down PVA glue over it. And uh, that will soak right in. And when it dries, it will be one nice solid blob. So there we go. There's a the finished robot. Um, quite happy with that. Um, I like the color. I like the look of it. Um, I like the articulation as well. Um, didn't like the fact that my airbrush actually started screwing up halfway through, so I was a little bit disappointed with, with some of the paintwork on this. I've not used airbrushes all that much, to be honest with you, uh, mainly because I've got cheap ones that don't work particularly well. So I think it's probably time for me to invest in a decent airbrush, because where the airbrush has worked well on this, I'm really happy with the result. So I think that's it for this video. Um, I was going to say that I'm probably done with mechs for a while, given that I've made three in a row, but actually I was in the shops the other day and I found a little something which I thought actually that would make a really good robot. So this probably won't be the last mech uh, that I build, although I might concentrate on a few other projects uh, before getting around to that. But anyway, that's it for this video. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting videos on future projects, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.